All right. So once again, welcome back to Coffee Cafe. We are finally on week three here. Last transaction we left off was actually、um, putting in the coffee grinder in its appropriate spot. Right. We. Um, did the last fixtures to it, right? We placed it into the coffee grinder, and again, we just filled out another purchase order for more coffee. Okay, so here we are. We're starting on a new day now. It is Sunday,、um, June sixteen. We are still opening or preparing to、um, set up the store. So, what is the next thing that we were supposed to have done? What happened here? On Sundays, we established the petty cash. We established the petty cash fund. So,、mm -hmm. how do we establish the petty cash drawer? We journalize just the transaction. We journalize the transaction. Yes. Now, how do we do that? So, petty cash.、Uh... The bank、uh, check, you know. Yep. We have to write. A check to whoever is responsible for the petty cash drawer. So in this case,、um, we didn't assign anybody, okay, to be in charge of the petty cash. Maybe we should have Irene be in charge of the petty cash. So again, I'm going to say here, Irene will be the okay. We'll be in charge of the petty. Cash drawer. Work yet. That's fine. We can. We well. If she's going to be the one that's going to be the main person, that's the cash register. So she can have the person that's also responsible for the petty cash drawer. Okay. Just because we can't trust Albert, because Albert is an independent contractor, and we only have myself, which in or or in this case, we don't work for the company either. We're just <laughs> yes, we're just volunteering our time to get the experience to understand it. So in this case. It really comes down to either Bob himself, but why would Bob be in charge of his own petty cash drawer? Petty cash, I don't think so. Yes. So in this case, Irene's the only one that is available. So Irene will be in charge of the petty cash drawer.、Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this case, yes, that's what we're going to do. We are going to、um, debit our petty cash drawer. Okay. And we are going to be writing a check to the petty cash drawer. Okay. So it is ten two hundred account. Good. So what account is petty cash? Ten two hundred. Ten two hundred. Checking is ten one hundred. All right. So how much is the petty cash drawer for,、uh, amount going to be written out for? Five hundred. Five hundred dollars. Okay. So let's go ahead and go and write that check. Okay. So now, yeah, you can write it to the register, but you would normally write it to the person who is going to get the check. But in this case, yes, you would write the petty cash. In this case, the Bob would have to do it himself. Because you're right, Irene doesn't come. No, Irene is already here. She started work on the fourteenth. So then、oh. you're yep. So you're going to go ahead and write that check out to Irene, okay, Jameson. So she can go to the bank, cash that check out, and put it into the petty cash drawer. So again,、uh, you would put the name here, and then on the side you would write the reason why you wrote this check out to her, and you would say for petty cash. Petty cash. Okay.、Mm -hmm. So again, in this case, we wrote check number fifteen, fifteen.、Mm -hmm. So, what's our description here? So、uh, establish a petty cash. We check fifteen, fifteen. Good. To establish petty cash, check number fifteen, fifteen. Okay. We have to go to the ledger. And now we go to the general ledger. Good. Okay. So in this case, we are going into assets because it's the petty cash drawer. Okay. So here we are, petty cash drawer and checking. Here it is, petty cash right under checking. It's the sixteen. 
And what's your note here? Check number 15. Uh, 15. Good. Okay. To establish petty cash check number 1515. All right. General journal. We're still on page four. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, because we're we reach we're yes. reaching the end of page. Oh no, we're on page five. Page five, five, five. Yeah, okay. Yesterday. Yep, you're right. So general journal page five. Debit for five hundred. Right, we have five hundred dollars in the petty cash drawer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, you're gonna check him. That's mm -hmm. ready. General journal number five. And we're going to credit our checking account by $500. So it is 1799 for 92. 1799 Good. So we're really dropping a lot in just setting up our business, okay? Now, in this case, right, did we deal with anybody? in regards to the petty cash drawer. Nope. No, so no need to go to the subsidiary ledger, right? Mm -hmm. Because we did not deal with a vendor, customer, or employee, per se. Like, we didn't do anything that had to do with an employee. Mm -hmm. So, let's see what happened next. Let's see, you set up your cash register. You always have at least $310. Okay. The fine balance. Okay. So you set up the register the same, no? You have to do a register uh, check, no? Mm hmm Correct. So in this case, do we have a specific bank account for um, the cash? Nope. Just checking, no? Is it? No? Just, uh, this is anything. So, how, so we're going to write a check out to what? How are we going to put cash into the cash register? What's it mean? Okay, so in this case, right, this is the same situation as it is with, with the petty cash drawer, right? Uh -huh. You have a lockbox that holds money, but in case this one is to make sure that we have enough money to exchange with our customers, yeah, right? Customers, yeah. So in this mm -hmm. case, what am I going to write a check out to? How am I going to put money in there? Cash. Okay. Bills. What account is that? Cash. Cash where? On the credit. I don't know. We have to take it out from the pocket at least. In well, in this case, can we take out money from our pocket and put it into the cash register? No. Okay, so let's take a look at my chart of accounts. All right. So I have checking. Mm -hmm. What else do I have? Bank. Yeah, the cash bank. Bank, yeah. The cash register, it is uh, where we're going to put the money. Okay, good. Now, is there an account for that? How do you know how much money you're going to put into the in, into your cash register? What do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> okay, so, okay, okay. The cash register? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. There's something I'm missing there. I don't understand the question. Okay, so in this case, right, I'm establishing my cash register, right? I need to uh -huh. put money into my cash register at all times. Mm -hmm. It's the same like a petty cash, no? It's similar to petty cash, but okay, so then do I have an account for cash that I'm going to be putting into my cash register? Mm. The checking account, huh? Well, in this case, can I, can I, my checking account is at my bank. Can I be able, if, if still people, come, if uh, customers come into the store, and um, buy something from me. Can I say, give me a second, I'm going to run to the bank so I can get you the exact change? 
No. No. No, you had to put it uh, on another, but I don't know, account, account receivable. <laughs> no, account no. receivable is when customer owes you the money. Yeah. Cash register? We, you want to put it in your asset or in the bank? Okay, so let's take a look at the charging accounts. What's the third account that you see in your assets? Petty cash. That, okay, fourth account. Cash, cash in register. Yes, right? You need to, it's similar to a petty cash drawer, right? But the petty cash is for minor business expenses. I need uh -huh. to set up an account for just the cash that's going to be in the register at all times. All right, so that's where the similarity is, right? Because in this case, right, I can't be using my checking account to be able to do my cash that I have for customers at the store, right? I need to have a separate lockbox, right? Which a cash register serves that, right? A lot of cash registers have the key to lock up the cash in the register, right? So in this case, I am going to be debiting my cash in the register. Okay, so that's the cash register because the cash register is an asset, right? In this case, this is money I'm putting inside the register. So this is cash account in register. in register okay and what account number is that it is uh, 10 300 good and then in this case right i also need to take money from my bank account to be able to put money into that cash register right oh okay now you have a two accounts here you have a cash register a cash in register so what's the difference between them i don't understand well in this case one of them is i bought the i bought the asset right uh -huh. am i going well, am i going to put in 350 dollars as part of the value of my cash register i got it no, i understand <laughs> okay what is the <laughs> one isn't one is a fixed what asset is like actually buying the cash register itself and this one is a more or less a bank account right where i'm putting cash in the register so in this case the cash in the register can fluctuate right you don't always have to have 310 dollars. you can raise it to say i have 500 dollars, or let's say sales picks up even more you're going to even have a thousand dollars in that cash register right mm -hmm. it doesn't change the actual total value of the actual cost of the asset itself because whatever you bought it for at 649.99 649.49 it will not change because you're not adding any value to it. You're just putting money into a lockbox. That's all you're doing. Yes? I understand. Good. I, I, I understand. What, okay, <laughs> good. My problem is the in. <laughs> oh, no worries. It's okay. That's why I had you to look carefully at your chart of accounts. There's, 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 yes. A small minor change was one that was cash registered. Another one is cash in register, in register. <laughs> okay so in this case right irene is also responsible for it because she's going to be the one that's going to be in the front uh desk at all times uh working the cash register so i want to also write the checkout to her too by the way we don't have to do the letter for the petty cash and uh and the did oh, we did we, did we not do that yes i think we did do that i think we did it no? okay i missed it Let's see. Uh, I wrote that we did check number 515. And let's see, petty cash. Yep, we did do it. We did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this case, this is cash in the register. So let's go back to the, the check register again. Because this time, I need to put cash in my register. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do, all right, once again. How much am I taking out? $310 in exact bills and exact change, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, we're going to write this out again to Irene Jameson. And then again, for your reasoning, it's for the cash register. Cash okay? register. So in this case, I wrote check number 1516. 
Okay. All right. So, what's your note going to be here? Um, set up the register. Good. Set up cash register. Okay. Sixteen. Oh, check sixteen. Uh, fifteen, sixteen. Good. And if you want to, you can even write how many exact dollar bills you have in the machine. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it as is. That's plenty of information there, saying that okay, I got money. I put it into the cash register. How much? Three hundred and ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So we're going to the ledger. I mean, we're going to go to the ledger. Okay, so in this case, we have cash in the register. So, 16. Check and 15, 16. Okay, general journal. Page five. Page five, and this time we're debiting it for $310. Okay, good. When we learn the the register, it was the same account, or you or you say uh, cash register. What do you mean? Say, can you repeat that question again? Yes, when we learn the petty cash and the register, it was cash in the register. Yes, this is cash in the register because that's going to be separate because petty cash. Right, is meant for any minor business expenses. So if someone needs to run the, to the store to go buy some more printer paper because we printed too many things out, right? That's what the petty cash drawer is for. Where the cash register is strictly only for exchanging money with your customers. I, I never pay attention to the in. It was so obvious that it was evident. Mm. When we learn, I never now I, I fix my notes because I forgot the email. Mm, that's okay. Oh. Oops, everything is popping on my screen now. No worries. <laughs> okay. So now we have uh, checking. Oh, so we gotta do checking. Yep, we gotta. Mm -hmm. Update our checking account because we wrote a check. So here we are. Okay, so here we are checking account. Fifteen, sixteen. Fifteen, sixteen, page five. Debit three hundred and ten, and it is one thousand four hundred eighty-nine ninety-two. Good. Four one four hundred. Uh, one four eight nine nine two. Good. Excellent. Good, that is all for now. Okay. Since that's 8.25. All right, so we don't do anything there, no? No, but you do want to make sure that you know where these numbers are coming from because this is where we're setting up our price points for what we sell. So here, uh, because we have an independent contractor, right? We have Alan. He's going to be our sales representative. And what he's going to be doing is he's going to act as if he is a wholesaler. Okay, so he's going to be selling coffee by the pound to um, other stores. Where for our store, right, we sell coffee 
We do sell coffee by the pound too if a customer wants it, but in this case, we're selling coffee uh, by making coffee cups. Like you can drink the coffee, right? We also sell the coffee mug. So in this case, this is just a little rundown of what the price points are. One cup of coffee is going to cost you $1.99. Um, again, um, any other cups of coffee, right? Whether it's Supreme or um, regular, it's going to be priced point at this. And a size medium to a large is et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, in this case, we sell our coffee mugs at $6.99. But as a wholesaler, right? We sell our coffee by the pound, which means we're going to charge $3.29 per pound of regular, and we're going to sell our um, Supreme $3.99 per pound. And in this case, our um, ceramic. Yes, our ceramic coffee mugs, if we sell it to those stores, right, we will discount them to, make, to sell it at $4.99. Okay. So that's a difference here being an in-store sale versus a wholesaler, okay? So that just want to make sure that you understand where the price points are because we will be opening our shop soon. So it is finally Monday. And what do we do here on Monday? Like you're going to pay, <laughs> pay the LV every Monday. Your foundation reinforce, reinforcement from invoice 1760. Uh-huh. Check. Uh-huh. Check. Oh, first we're gonna uh, so if we're gonna pay, so account uh, account payable and check. No, it's have to be something. Like Good. That. No, that's correct. You're gonna do accounts payable. Account payable. And you have a check. I just, oh, wait, what is that? I I just don't remember how much it is. We have to go to the. Um, how do you call that? Where can we find where we placed our bill? On the subsidiary ledger or in ledger? That's correct. Subsidiary ledger is going to be the correct spot. So again, subsidiary ledger lets us pull up information about our customers, or in this case, our vendors, excuse me. So in this case, who did who are we paying? We're paying LV Remodeling. So let's check LV out LV Remodeling. LV Remodeling Company. Here we go. We have a bill, right? For the fifth for the seventeen sixty bill, right? For fifteen sixty. Okay, and good. Let's see here. It says we're supposed to pay it on the seventeenth of June, which that is correct. It is the seventeenth of June. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm paying fifteen sixty. Fifteen sixty. You want now or later? Well, we the, we're, it's the due date is the 17. We have to pay now. The 17. Yeah, no, I say we use now the the subsidiary ledger or, or later. Oh, well, do the journal first and then we can do everything after. Mm -hmm. okay. So journal first. So we know what journal we have to owe. We are going to write a check out for 1560. 1560. Okay. So we have a, um, LVA remodeling. LVA remodeling. remodeling. Okay. And we go to the register. We're going to have uh, the check 1517, it's supposed to be. Mm hmm. Check 1517 for a 1560 to LV remodeling CO. Hold on. I thought I already have them in here. Here we go. Oh. Oh. You... What happened? No, no, I don't understand. I didn't understand what you said. Oh, oh, I already had. I already wrote a check out to them, so um, Excel didn't recognize that I have them in my system already. Okay, so here we go for fifteen sixty. Okay. And 
the, the register, so we plan to. You gonna are we gonna write on the journal what? Uh, mm -hmm. What happened to this transaction? Who did you rewrite the check out to? Uh, LV remodeling. Mm -hmm. And it was a check fifteen seventeen. What was the invoice number that we were making a payment to? The invoice it is seventeen sixteen. Okay. Yep. That's it. Not yet. <laughs> we need the ledger and the rest. Yes, we gotta do the ledger and then we do the rest. Okay, so ledger first. So we're going to accounts payable because we owe less money, right? So here we are, I'm in accounts payable. So invoice and check, both or just check the invoice? Uh, 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 everything, so invoice, so you could say um, invoice number 1760, payment with check number 1517. Okay. Which number five? Oh, uh, we start a new uh, journal. A new page? Yep, we are on the new page. Right there, page so six. Page six. Mm -hmm. journal, page six. Page six. And we have the credit. You got the debit for the 1516. Okay. We're going to debit, okay? Yep. And so we have. Uh, I'm going to make a mistake. I just took it out. So it is 14, 140, what? It's 16,460. Uh, don't add your, 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 we're subtracting, yes. Uh, subtraction is uh, 139096. I did that just okay. Instead of All right, 139647. So after that, we're supposed to go to the oh, that's the account payable to the checking. And then we don't have the money enough. Oh, you already you already put it in. Okay, let's go ahead and fill in the checking. So check number fifteen seventeen. The page number six. We don't have the money. Okay. Okay. Now in this case, we are short by seventy dollars and eight cents. In this case, right, since it's right here, my negative here, this is what I'm going to do um, because this um, this negative debit balance is also known as a credit of of the 7080, 708. Mm -hmm. All right, so then what I'm going to do here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this by just changing the font color because what I want to do is because it has a normal debit balance, I want to keep the equation in my debit column, but I do that by hiding it so then I don't see what the next transaction is. So again, that's what I'm gonna do. But it, in reality, the formula is still there, right? I just have it in white ink. So in this case, I'm gonna make sure that it reflects as a credit of 7008, okay? Or in this case, let me see if I'm able to Okay, 7008. No, in this case, I can't. Okay, 7008. Now, in this case, right, that means I have less money in my bank. However, this doesn't mean necessarily that I actually wrote an NSF. Why? Because I wrote a bunch of checks, and how do I know that it was cleared right away? I don't know because the bank takes anywhere from two to three days to process these things, right? 
Obviously, the ones that you wrote out for Petty Cash Drawer and for the cash register, those are instant because we made Irene go out to um, the bank to get the money. But in this case, right, the day that we wrote this check for fifteen sixty is going to also be the same day that I send out the check. So in this price, the the customer, or I'm sorry, the vendor has not even received this check yet because it usually takes two to three days for postal service as well, right? We just sent this, we just mailed out this check right now. So our assumption is that we are safe because the mail, they would not be able to receive the mail until a couple days from now. Okay, so in this case, no NSF here, but yes, we do need to keep a, aware and a look at that we did go over our check amount in our checking account, okay? Or that we have a possibility of going over, okay? So, yes, we have to go deposit money as soon as possible. So, what's next? Let me see. We're done with this, right? Uh, no, we have to go to remodeling, uh, to the subsidiary ledger. Correct. We have to go to the subsidiary ledger. Okay. Here we already are, right? We have to do another line. Because today is the 17. We made a payment using check number 15. 15 so, uh, 17. I think so. Good. Yeah. <laughs> what bill are we paying? We're paying 7060. Okay. General journal number six. Okay. And what do I need to do here? We go right away to the payment, no? Yep. We're going to go straight to payment and say that we paid a check used for 1560 60. Okay. So, therefore, right, if I pulled down my formula, right, I should also, it should tell me that I made a payment of negative 1560 So, therefore, I owe zero dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good so far? Uh-huh. All right. So we're done with that, that's all. I'm sorry? Yeah. We're done with this uh, transaction. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay. So therefore, I'm going to go back to the scenario and see what happened next. Okay. So here, what happened here? We have uh, Albers made uh, um, how an order. Who is Albert, the guy, the commission guy? The, the commission the guy. guy, yes, yes. Albert is the commission guy, yes, he is. So we have to do the order, but uh, we have to put something specific because we have to know later for the commission or not. Um, yes, yes. So every time he makes a sale, we have to calculate his commissions. Now, in this case, what is this? What does this piece of paper tell you? So you order, you order 15 pound of, uh, but we can take, oh, that's from inventory. We're going to take it out now. Yes, okay. that's exactly. Yes, we, yes, yes. We're going to have to take this out of inventory when we sell it. Yes. So we don't have to, or we do sales. We, uh, no, I don't know how we have to write that for us. Is a sell plus the tax. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, there this is a vendor to customer relationship. So in this case, um, since we're we're acting as we're the wholesaler, we do not need to charge tax. We, they can be tax exempt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what's so particular in this transaction here? Estimate total is, is, I don't know. Keep reading the invoice, or in this case, the sales order. Keep reading it to all the way. Right, so yes, we, 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 they're, 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 they want to have 15 pounds of regular and um, 10 pounds of supreme. 
Yeah. We're going to, cups. yeah, we're going to sell 20 cups to them for a grand total of $189.05. Okay. Let's have a COD, COD charger. Okay, yes, we're going to charge a 50% COD, net five. That's the terms. So the total estimate is 219. Okay. It is an order. Yes, wow. it is an order, right? We charged them $30 for shipping or for delivery charges. Uh -huh. So in this case, right, they owe me $219 and five cents. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's what's today's date? The 17th. When is this subject to be delivered? In five days. Or... That's when it's due. When it's due. So that's supposed to be June nineteenth, sorry. June nineteenth. So did we did we complete a sale? Yes or no? No. What is this? This is a simple sales order, right? It's just yeah. someone who's requesting an order. Yes, it is. It's, it's have an estimate. The uh, uh, pr price to is. I don't know if you calculate just like that. Maybe something later. But uh, my problem is where to put it that because it's not an order. From us, it's an order from our inventory. So, it's acting like, uh, uh, how do you call that? Like a sales or like uh, what? Where we put that? Well, in this case, right? Do we have a place for commissions? We do for over the guy that when we exactly. So that will be the same place there. Now, in this case, um, I did not build a sales order form because. In this case, we are not going to be in charge of this. Alan is, right? He is fully responsible for it. However, at least I'm able to make uh, my, uh, at least record that it's a potential sale. So in this mm -hmm. case, right, who did I, did Albert put this in for a sales order for? The commission pays? No, 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 no. Who was the customer? Oh, Katie, Katie Coffee Corner. Exactly. So in this case, the first order that he's doing is going to be for Katie's Coffee, coffee Corner. Corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, of course, we didn't invoice them or do anything yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these blank until I actually sell the product or actually del deliver it on the 19th. Okay, so at least we have an idea of that Albert is uh, made, is going to make his first sale on the 19th of June. Okay, mm -hmm. how much was the quoted amount for? 219 estimate or, or for the, well, well, they charge the shipping, so it's 189 for us, no? Uh, so in this case, no, charge the shipping charges because Albert has to go and deliver it. He can't just yeah. he can't just say, "Oh, the shipping charge is free." No, it takes gas his effort to bring and carry the stuff over to them. So he's charging his customers thirty dollars extra on top of that to deliver the stuff to the customer. So, so it'd be for the full two hundred and nineteen. Yes. And two hundred nineteen and and uh, zero five cent and five, five cents. Cent. Okay, good. So that's the estimated total amount. Now, when we he actually does deliver it, that is when you are able to, um, you know, process that um, he gets his commissions. Okay, but in this case, nothing here that you can do. Okay, in regards to um, you know, disorder. Yes, exactly. Right. Because in this case, what if Katie calls back the next day and says, never mind, I changed my mind. I want 10 cups instead of 20. Right. So in this mm -hmm. case, it's just an order. It's a potential sale. It's it's guaranteed because they are ordering the stuff, but they can cancel at any given time. Any moment. Yeah. Yes. So in this case, that's all we need to do here in the commissions. Or in a case, in this case, this will be the sales order. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right.
So that's how we would go the commission. Yes. Yes. Good. So we continue with that. So we have the grand opening. Yes, we do. Not on the silks. So that we go into the inventory, no? So in this case, right, what is the first transaction you need to do before you do inventory? You need to sell the stuff first, right? Oh, but the, yes, we have to sell that first. Yep, so. Sales. Sales what? The coffee. Okay, so, now, but well, look at this. Let's take a look at your chart accounts. What do you actually sell? Coffee, medium coffee and large coffee. Okay, but specifically... From the regular coffee. Okay. So, and the supreme coffee. Okay. So regular coffee. All right. Coffee. Now, do you always recognize sales first? No, the sales is not first, it's the second. It should be afterwards, yes. Yeah. So in After this case... This. Okay, so in this case, right, let's take a look. Now, here's a little note that I put here that all cash sales must be deposited into the bank. So in this case, that means my sales that I had for these customers were cash. We're going to check. Checking it out. Okay, it, so you put it there. No, you don't specify what you sell. So you just put it uh, checking account and sales and sales taxes. Well, no, in this case, yes, I want to keep track of every sale that I have, right? What if I say, uh, what if I say that um, the sales for the month, everybody seems to like Supreme Coffee more than regular coffee? Then that will tell me I need to buy more Supreme Coffee. Mm -hmm. What if everyone says that, oh, uh, just look at my records, people are more likely to buy the smaller cup because they want to try it versus commit to the bigger cup. Right? Those are all yes. pieces of information that is pertinent to me because I can use I that to make, uh, to make executive decisions. Do I need to invest in more cup sizes? Do I need to invest in more materials? Do I need to invest in more type of inventory? Right? So in this case, yes, yes I want to be able to um, itemalize each and every sale. So what are each and every single sale that I have here? Check, you go in. Check, uh, regular coffee. Sales for regular, okay, so okay, good. Sales for regular coffee. And uh, supreme coffee. Okay, now, okay, so sales for regular coffee. What kind of regular coffee? Medium and large, oh, all of this? All of it, that's correct, because we want to make sure, right? Which one is our best seller? The medium regular coffee or the large supreme coffee? Right, because we bought two different coffee cup sizes, right? We have a medium size and a large size, but we sell two different types of coffee, right? We sell regular coffee and supreme coffee. Yeah, we have an account for that. Yes, we do. So... Mm -hmm. Sales, sales regular, regular medium coffee regular medium uh i think sales i think it's medium regular coffee uh, it's right sales and medium regular coffee yeah it is 4300 okay and we have a sale for large you go for Large regular coffee too. Yep. Sales. Large regular coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is uh, forty three hundred and fifty. Okay. And then we have um, sell for medium supreme coffee. Okay. So sales. For medium supreme coffee. Account yes. number 40. 450. 450. Okay. And we have a sales for large supreme coffee. Okay. 
and it is forty five hundred. You said forty five hundred. Yes. Okay. And we have uh, sales tax. We, we have, have sales tax. Okay, good. And we have a discount. Where do you put discounts? In, uh, um, how we call that? I forgot. Let me see. One second. Um, and hello, one second. No, this is a discount, it's not because it's broken. Sell discount. Well, where well, where would you put journalize? Would you journalize that as a debit or as a credit? As a credit, debit, sorry. Why, why, why would it be a debit? Actually, no, it's, it's a credit. Well, okay, so uh, tell me why. Credit is credit. Why would you say credit? Does a sales discount go for the sales or does it go against the sales? Is it not, is, is against the sales. It, is, uh, okay, you said against the sales, so does that so increase? Debit. It'd be debit. So in this and case, debit. sales discount's gonna go right under checking. Oh, that's right, and sell discount. All right. Okay, so sales discount, you have uh, account forty six hundred, forty six thousand. Sorry. And your sales tax payable. And tax sales tax payable it is uh, zero zero zero. Where is it? Where is it? It is 27,000. Good. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in here. Yep. Too many, many numbers. Okay. So, so the total is going to be, okay. 27,000. Let's see. We have to put the taxes separate and everything. Correct. So let's start off with the checking account. The How much am I going to be receiving in my checking account? Seven. Actually, actually, you have to take it out the out with the discount, but we have the taxes too. So seven hundred forty-five plus uh, one seventy-two. No. No. Uh, no, that's a discount. That's the taxes. Fifty-six uh, eighty-five. All right. So in this case, how much cash am I supposed to be receiving? In grand total. Seven forty-five ninety-four. Yep, seven forty-five ninety-four. How much was my ta my sales discount for? Sales discount is one seventy-two point twenty-seven. Okay. How much was my sales for the medium regular coffee? So you have medium regular coffee one fifty-seven. And 21 cents. Okay. <laughs> What's my amount for my regular, uh, my, for my large regular coffee? The large is 209 and 30 cents. Okay. What about my large, I'm sorry, my regular Supreme coffee? We have the medium, it is 201 and 61 cent, 69 cent. Okay, and then my um, large Supreme Coffee. 293.16. Okay, and how much was my tax? The tax is data at 56.85. Okay. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to double check to see if my journal or my, my debits match my credits. 
So in this case, I got um, 918 on the left, and I have 918.21 on the right. So in this case, my journal is good. Okay, good. Now, what's my description going to be? Uh, so opening, grand opening? Mm -hmm. So grand opening, 20% discount. Sure. Yeah, so in this case, in store sales, grand opening, oops, grand opening, 20% uh, discount. All right, so what do I do with this? So we're going to the ledger. We're going to go to the ledger. Good. Okay. okay. And we start from checking. Start, okay, start from checking. So here we are in checking, right, where we left off. Well, oh, well, well, why are you subtracting? Because it is on the credit. We're supposed to. We... Why are we subtracting money? We just received money. We just had a sale. We received I money. I, I, I know. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. I know what you're doing. It's for the journalize. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm right or not. Let, let 745. I mean, I write 745. I don't know why. 745. 745. So we're supposed to have in the debit. Side, we're supposed to have seven hundred seventy-five point nineteen. Mm -hmm. So now the seventy dollars is can go back to the. It can disappear from the credit. <clears throat> Wait, what did you get for your answer? Seven six seven five nineteen. I don't know why. Twenty seven. No, it is. Oh, I write totally. I don't know where I, it comes from. This number that I write. That's a bit tricky. I, I, it's my mistake. I don't know why I write that twenty seven, but I mix all of the the numbers. No worries. Okay, so it should be <laughs> seven forty five ninety four. Ninety four. Yes, minus. Uh, Eighty-six is supposed to be on the at the end. Yep, that's right. Six seven five eighty-six. There we go. So after that, okay. You still keeping the the seventy dollars in the credit? Yep, yep. Right. Because because that tells me that right here, I had a credit, but because. I kept my formula in my debit column. Okay, it's still debit. Yeah, now you have that. It's, it should be. Uh, no, I, I put it because the formula. Yeah, the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Yeah, it's the same. Because the formula is the same. Sales discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sales discount. Boom. Revenues. Sales 
So this comes from 20%. Yeah. In opening, grand opening. And the amount is. 172 20 <coughs> excuse me So we have a page number six. We have a debit for how much? Uh, for the one seventy two twenty seven point twenty seven. Okay, for one seventy two twenty seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So now we continue with the rest. Sells uh, coffee, medium coffee, regular medium. To medium regular. Mm -hmm. We have that. Uh, How many? Oh, you're going to write the uh, 79 caps of coffee? 79? Yep. Yeah. You want to put on the grand opening or regular daily summary? Or? It doesn't really matter here because yeah. you, you we're just counting how many cups you sold. So it doesn't matter whether you have a sale or not, you're still going to sell X amount of cups. Yeah. Okay. So the same amount of page number six. Page number six. And we have a 157, 29, 21, sorry. I don't know how to read today. It's awful. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, page <laughs> six. Okay. Credit. Yep. For... 15621 157.21 157.21 So therefore I should have a credit balance of 157.21 okay. Next account here is going to be your large large one regular uh -huh. So we have a 70 cups And page number six, the amount is 209.30 cents for credit side. Whoopsies, whoa, went too far down there. Okay, so two oh nine thirty. Yep. Next one for medium supreme. Medium supreme, we have eighty one caps. Page six, and we have a two hundred and one and sixty nine cents. We have uh, 84 caps. Page 6, 293.16. Mm -hmm. 
Now I have the six tax sales on the availability. Eight point twenty-five percent. Yep, that's it's eight point two five percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. In this case, you don't really need to have to write that in there because you should already know it's an in-store sales. That's why you charge sales tax. So for my case, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna leave it. I don't care to put any notes in there because I already know tax is gonna be eight point two five percent. So base page six. Uh, we have um, 5685. Fifty six dollars and eighty five cents. Uh, Fifty six eighty five. Yep. Good. Now, let me proceed back to the other ones. Okay. We're done with that, no? E yes, we are with the ledger. Mm. And that's all, no? <laughs> we have to reflect that somewhere else? Uh, no. In regards to the transaction stuff, yes, we are actually technically done because here, right, do we know who we sold these coffee cups to? No. No, so there's no need for us to even... Um, to be able to use the subsidy ledger for this, right? Because it's a grand opening store, store, uh, store sale, right? We sold to a bunch of strangers, right? We don't need their information. We don't need to, we don't care about who they are because they don't owe us money. They paid at time of service, right? They paid us their money. So that's all we have to do here. But now, since you remember, right? Now that I am done with this transaction, right? Here are a few things that I need to do. Right, if you look at the list down here, I need to deposit all my cash sales into the bank. Into the bank? Yes. So deposit. I oh, you're going to do a deposit. Yes, so this is where oh. we're finally doing the deposit because remember, it, I said that in my checking account, I have the $745. But in reality, did I even deposit that money into the, in my checking account? No. No, I have to physically go do that. So I have to make my deposit at the end of the day, which in this case, all right, mm -hmm. it's the end of the day, right? I earned, how much money did I earn? 795. 795. 45 and 90%. All right, and since today is the 17th, it's gonna go directly into my bank account. So here, I'll give you, I'll give you an idea. Every day, at the end of every day of every sale, you are to, um, you are to, uh, to, uh, to deposit. Yes, you are to deposit the money. The money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And still use the black coffee ten pound. Okay. And supreme coffee. Mm -hmm. So in this case, right? What does this mean here? Still use the black coffee and supreme coffee before the inventory worksheet. So we're using fifteen pound and and, and ten pound of uh, coffee. Okay, so um, in this case, why do I need to? What what what's so great about this information that I use these coffee cup these coffees? Are we selling? No. Well, we didn't sell them. We used them. Mm -hmm. So what? So why is this information important? What's so important about this information that I used this many pounds of inventory? To get out the inventory. We had to take it out of inventory, but why? 
what kind of method am I keeping track of for my coffees? Perpetual. Perpetual, right? I have to update my inventory every single time I either um, sell the item or every time I purchase the item, right? So in this case, I did not sell them, but I did use them. So therefore, I don't even have these coffees because I used them to brew the coffee that we made. So in this case, right, I need to go to my inventory worksheet. Okay? Yep. Inventory worksheet. And here we are. We're going to look at the very first one, which is the regular coffee. Okay? Today is the 17th. How many pounds of the regular coffee did I use? Uh, we have a 10 pound. We have 10 pounds of the regular coffee. Now, in this case, what... Um, what costing method am I using to calculate? Uh, the average. Okay. The yes, moving the average. moving average. So in this case, what is my current cost per item? Uh, $1.60. It's right now $1.60, okay? So in this case, right, what is 10 times $1.60? One, 160 10 times $1.60. It, it's definitely not a dollar. It's not, no. not $160. No, 160 Let's try it again. I have 10 pounds I 10 sold pounds. at $1.60. Uh, yes, it is $60. Because it's the yes, $60, no? Sixteen dollars. Yeah, not a hundred and sixty. No, I do You said you said a hundred and sixty. So no, not a hundred and sixty. It's sixteen. Yes, yes. All right, good. So now we understand. We're on the same page. So we used sixteen dollars worth of inventory. So in this case, right, because I taught you this, I'm gonna go ahead and carry this value over, right? Because I no longer have a hundred and twenty-five pounds, right? I sold. 10 of them. So how many pounds should I have left? Uh, one, oh, I cannot, uh, 15. Uh, one, uh, 15. Good. No worries. It's Thursday. I get it. I, I, I block today. <laughs> so we have to recalculate all of the... the yeah, so in this case, right, in this case, I want you to do it this way, all right? I want you to take your um, total cost, right, of, what is that? Oh, that's why I made it so much, so many decimal places. I only need this to be two decimal places. All right, going the wrong way, right? Okay, so never mind. Let's back it up. All right, so there you go. Two hundred dollars right that's what my current amount is right now in this case this is what i'm gonna do because i need to constantly be changing the average cost i'm gonna take my 200 and i'm gonna subtract out the 16 that i sold how much should i have in total left 184 184 okay so i don't know let me highlight this whole thing because i don't know why it's like that in the same place. Okay, even Excel is giving me problems. Okay, so I have $184 left, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, what is my average cost per item? Right, I'm going to take that. It's still going to be a dollar. It, yes, Six. it's still the same, okay? okay. Now, that will change when I receive my next pile of, um, of, yes, of inventory because, again, it will change the quantity and change the total cost. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So I blacked out this whole entire bar right here because I no longer have 125 pounds. I have 115 pounds. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. moving average for you, okay? So let's go ahead and do the same thing to our... Supreme coffee. So in this case, I on the 17th, how many pounds did I sell or used? Uh, 
15.5. Is that right? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Yep. It says right here 15 and a half pounds. I used 15 and a half pounds. Okay. So then again, what is right now, what kind of costing method am I using to calculate the cost here? $1.80. Right. I'm using FIFO, right? The only batch I have right now is. Oh, you have the FIFO here? Or... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. FIFO. So that means, well, in this case, I only have one batch of inventory, one batch only. So it's going to cost me $1.80. So in this case, what is my total cost here? $27.90. And $27.90. Mm -hmm. Good. Wait, hold on. Why is this number so off? Let me let me let me look at this again. Why are they so off? Are we on the correct day? Uh, let's see. We're on the seventeenth. Mm -hmm, seventeen. Um, okay, so we sold it. Yeah, for fifteen and a half. Okay, mm -hmm. so for twenty seven dollars and ninety cents. Okay, so in this case, how am I going to take it out this time? So again. I am going to go indirectly into my batch of inventory because in this case, I have to keep my batches of inventory separate, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, if I sold 15 and a half, right? So I take my 125, I minus my 15 and a half. How many pounds should I have left over? 109.5. 109.5, which leaves me a total of 197.10 which is correct, right? If I started out with um, a total of 225 minus 27.90, that should give me um, 197 and 10 cents. Okay, that should be correct. Okay, and yes, you can do it this way if it makes sense to you. If you don't want to have it automatically calculate for you, then you can also do this too, where you follow the same rules for... Um, average costing except you're not recalculating the average cost you're leaving right. it the way it is in this case right i could take my 225 and subtract my 27 dollars and 90 cents to get me um 197.10 mm -hmm. okay yep all right so then now that i have all my information right i i um, I sold a total of $27.90 worth of uh, Supreme Coffee, and I sold $16 worth of regular coffee. So how do I update my inventory in my journal? It is not a sale, so I don't know what, what you're supposed to do. How do you update inventory? Oh. The cost of goods sold? The cost of goods sold is correct. So in this case, go look at your charge of accounts. Do I have a cost of goods sold account? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, you do. Thousand. And do I, is it specific for the coffees? Yes, you have for each one. Okay, so cost of goods sold, um, regular coffee. And yes. I have the cost of goods sold, supreme coffee. Yes, cost of goods sold of regular coffee is fifty dollars fifty hundred five hundred fifty. Okay, the the account and this is five hundred and divide fifty one hundred. Good, perfect. And I'm taking it out from inventory. So what account am I going to be taking it out from? From the coffee, the regular coffee. Good, from the regular coffee and the Supreme and the coffee. coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which should be 12020, 12040. Okay. So in this case, how much did I calculate that I used for my regular coffee? For the regular coffee, we use 15 pounds and 
hundred. I don't remember the the amount. What is this? Is the supreme? This is supreme. supreme. Not one ninety seven. No, that's how much I have left. Oh. What did I? How did I calculate for the that I used that I sold? Four. 27.9. 27.9, nine, right? The first one, the regular was 16, and now the Supreme is for $27.90. So $27.90. Okay, so again, these are the same exact amounts I'm going to be taking out for my inventory. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to put your uh, finishing off the journal? What you're going to put here is in-store use. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. In-store use. All right. What's after the journal? Uh, the ledger. You need to post it to the ledger. Good. The first is for the 17th, right? This was the 17th, yes. So now we have a cost of the tool. We okay. have to update. Mm -hmm. We have to update our inventory. Yes, you are in commission. I am not in commissions. This is the cost of goods sold? Uh, this is a cost of goods sold, not commissions. In this case, remember, we the, our commissions person is only strictly for what he sells. In this case, this is a store sale. I no no I know I just, you just showed me the on the screen you showed me commission you didn't cut. Can you see that or is my screen showing you that I'm on the ledger right now? Yes. So this okay that. That's the commissions. This is the letter. Yeah, but on the com on the top of the you see the account that you have there. It is commission, medium coffee cups. And okay, so that's cost of material, not commission. Oh, cost of material. Yes. Okay. okay so yes. All right. Okay. I'm just making sure you are on the same page as me for <laughs> the cost of goods sold. So again, I'm on the cost of goods sold tab in the uh, ledger account. So what am I looking for? Cost of goods sold for, for, goods sold for um, regular, regular coffee. coffee. Okay, good. Okay, okay. We're on the same page. Okay, good. Yeah, All right. So the, the 17. Ledger. All right. Mm -hmm. How many pounds did we use? So we used uh, 10 pounds. We used 10 pounds. I think it's like that, right? 10, 10 LBS. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, general journal. We're still on page six here. Now, this is a cost of goods sold. So in this case, which is an expense account, how much did I use? 10 pounds, what did it cost me? $16. $16. Okay, good. And we have a little Supreme Court. Yes, we do. Just give me one second. Let me format this. Okay, then we're gonna go down to Supreme Coffee, right? In this case, how many did we? How many pounds did we use? Uh, fifteen and a half. Fifty-fifty. We used fifteen and a half pounds. Okay, and then General Journal number six mm -hmm. for twenty-seven dollars and ninety cents. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we need to update our. The regular coffee. Yes, our inventory Inventor. items here. So let's go ahead and look up. Let's see. Um, I think it should be all the way up here. Check. Let me go down. Okay, so no, that's what counts receivable. 
All right, here we are, regular coffee. Okay, so in this case, uh, the line item here is going to be for the 17th, and I'm going to write that. I used 10 pounds. Okay. General Journal 6. All right, and this time, I'm going to credit my account for 16. 16. So therefore, how much coffee should I have left? 184. 184. So again, we did that correctly, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I need to tell you. That's Every true. time you enter in something into your ledger, your ledger is going to be the most accurate piece of information than your inventory worksheet. However, a good way to make sure that you did do the accounting correctly is to match your inventory worksheet with your ledger. So in this case, mm -hmm. my ledger tells me I should have $184. And that should match your inventory worksheet exactly. as well. If for regular coffee, I should have a total of one hundred and eighty-four dollars left. Okay. So good. So that's another way that we can keep track, good record of our ledger accounts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that we have that, we're gonna go down to our supreme coffee. Okay. It is yep. six seventeen. We used. 15 and a half pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. It should be 190. No. 197. What do you mean 97? Oh, we use 20. Uh, we use 27. Uh, 27 uh, actually, uh, the price is 27.90. Yes, that's the total cost of goods sold, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what's my total cost in, ending, in my ending inventory? 197. Point, uh, point point one, no? Yep, right. 197.1, or in this case, 10 cents. 197, that's what I should have in my ending inventory for my Supreme Coffee, which let's go ahead and double confirm that. So Supreme Coffee, yes, I have $197.10 left in my Supreme Coffee. Okay, good. All right, now we are completely done with the ledger. We don't need the subsidy ledger because inventory has nothing to do with the, my vendors or anybody, right? So now mm -hmm. I am completely done with this transaction and it's at exactly two fifty five dollars right now. So... I'm going to stop here so that we can continue on with this when we come back on the next day, which is going to be uh, June 18. Yes. So in this case, right, let's go ahead and take our 20-minute break. So please be back no later than 3.15. Three fifteen. All right. Okay. See you.